Good morning and welcome to another edition, season opener really, so a grand edition um, of the Football Digest weekly podcast. So thanks so much for joining us, really appreciate it. And thanks so much uh, for my colleagues also joining us, James Nursey, um, Midlands man for, for, for the Mirror. Pleasure to have you alongside, uh, James. Simon Mullock. Um, Sunday aficionado. Um, uh, it'll be really interesting to hear from Simon on, on what Manchester, Manchester City can do this season and the Manchester beat as well. And Chris McKenna, um, uh, Daily Styles Merseyside man. And uh, let's look at sort of kind of what Liverpool and, um, and Everton are sort of are capable of and much more besides as well. But let's start really, shall we, with what a week it's been for football and, you know, the biggest move, the biggest star. Uh, the biggest talking point of the of the summer globally, I guess, Lionel Messi. Um, I mean, where where to begin, really? I mean, a week ago at this at this same time, you know, Lionel Messi seemed to be heading into a, another season of playing for Barcelona until things unfolded about twelve hours later on that Thursday night, and Barcelona dropped the devastating news that, um, from their perspective, that uh, Messi would be no more at the new Camp, and now he's off to to PSG. I mean, what does this mean, guys? It will be really interesting, won't it? I, I think, you know, for the landscape of the Champions League and European football and indeed the Premier League, because, you know, has the Premier League missed out on the biggest global superstar? Have they missed out on an opportunity? Because I think it's been a while, really, since we've arguably had the biggest star, you know, single a star in the world in the Premier League is that is that a missed opportunity, Simon? What what do you think? Was that a missed opportunity for, for Messi? And what do you make of the Messi move generally to PSG? Have they got to win the Champions League this season? Yeah, that, I mean that's what it's been designed for. You know, what's what's he earning? Close on a million pounds a week. So anything other than the, the winning the Champions League is unthinkable, really, for Paris Saint Germain this year. Um, I think as much as it's um, a, a missed opportunity for Premier League clubs to bring somebody who I think has been the, the best player in the world over the last decade, um, with you know, with all due respect to Cristiano Ronaldo. I think it's a missed opportunity for Messi as well. Um, now, obviously, that would depend on whether they were offers from the Premier League. And certainly last year, there was offers from the Premier League when it looked like he would leave uh, Barcelona then. Manchester City felt they were a long way down the road towards bringing him in then. And obviously, he tried to force his departure from Barcelona, wasn't willing to take the legal route to make that happen. Um, it looked odds on that he would still leave Barcelona 12 months later when his contract expired. But then there was a change of uh, president and um, it's, the things seemed to have settled down with him. Um, but yeah, going back, I thought I think it's a missed opportunity for, for Messi because I think um, and I'm not sure he will be tested too much playing in France. Uh, certainly in the Premier League, in the Champions League, he will because that's what you know. That's what he's been brought in for, as I've said. But I, I just think, in terms of um, enhancing his own reputation, if it's possible to do that, I think really he should have been looking towards uh, joining the Premier League club. Mm, yeah, it would be really interesting. Now they've got to win that Champions League, haven't they? I mean, Chris, what do you think? Did, does this make them red hot favourites? Is you know, I mean, we often talk about what's expected of Pochettino. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether Pochettino would welcome this or not. It certainly heightens up the pressure on him as as PSG boss, doesn't it? Uh, just just a tad. I mean, he got Tottenham to the Champions League final. If he can't get an attack of Mbappe, Neymar, and uh, Messi to the to lift the Champions League, then, yeah, I don't think he'll be in the job <laughs> next summer if they don't have the Champions League trophy, which is massive pressure. But, as you say, will he have welcomed it? Of course, he's not a, He's not going to have gone to PSG and gone, oh, no, don't sign me Messi. I don't want that pressure. I mean, he's going to have to take it on. And they are, I, without doubt, to me, the favourites. Look, if, if Man City get Harry Kane, then he's <clears> starting <throat> to look that, OK, it's there between them two, really. But then you can't rule out Chelsea and, and others as well. But at the minute, yeah, you would put PSG, uh, the red-hot favourites, clear favourites, and anything else, even getting to the final and getting beat, is is a huge failure now for them. Mm, yeah, sure. James, I watch a hell of a lot of European football. I subscribe to a hell of a lot of football, probably far too much. I mean, you know, everything is said about sort of kind of needing, PSG needing to win the Champions League. Is this a game changer for French football 
or just is the reality yeah. that it doesn't really actually mean that much and it's all just about PSG in the Champions League, if you see what I mean? Yeah, well, I, I can't see too many other top stars flooding into France to play in, in Ligue 1 now. I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm not sure Messi going there at 34 is significantly going to raise that the profile of the league to the extent that the top players are clamouring to go there. I think Messi's going to probably be an exception in that respect. And I'm obviously, like you guys, really interested to see how he gets on there at 34. I mean, there are question marks over what he could do in an Argentina shirt still, weren't they? But he won the Copa America this summer with them. Let's now see if we can really, um, I, I dare say there are still some doubters out there about what Messi can do because he was always in a very strong Barcelona side traditionally. <clears throat> so can he go in there and be the catalyst for PSG? Uh, it's a really interesting challenge. Perhaps that's why he's gone there. Um, you suspect it's probably got more to do with cash. Uh, but we're all, we're all going to be watching, aren't we? Um, I suppose more people will be tuning in to watch the French League now, which uh, is a boost for them. But really, uh, it's all about the Champions League with, with Messi going there, as you guys have alluded to. Yeah. Simon, do you think ultimately they, they, they win the Champions League? I mean, p various people were picking their predicted PSG 11s. And I have to say, it was, <laughs> it was frightening. I mean, they, you, you, we forget how much quality they've got now in midfield, by the way, with Verratti and, and, and Wijnaldum. I mean, it's just, it's just, never mind the front line, it's astonishing, isn't it? And and obviously also so in the Italian goalkeeper. I mean, it's just incredible lineup now. It's, it's the Harlem Globetrotter stuff, isn't it? Well, they're not going away, are they? It's a bit like Man, Man City over here. They're, they're, they're not going away. They're, you know, City lost in the Champions League final last year, Paris Saint-Germain the year before. And these these clubs have made it clear that that you know they're here to stay. It's not just a, a kind of flash in the pan and, and the, the owners disappear. I, I I think going back to Poch, I think the pressure really is on him this year, not just to deliver the French league because let's let's have it right. You know, Lille won the French league last year, which was a a massive shock given the the quality that that, that Paris have, have got in the squad. And I was looking back earlier this morning and. and you know, po Poch's only trophies are a, are, are a French are a French cup, and basically the, the equivalent of the French charity shield. Now, um, I know he's he's not been at clubs that you would say are expected to win trophies. Although he did a fantastic, you know, let's let's be fair, he did an absolutely fantastic job at, at Tottenham. But he's forty nine now. He's got to start turning that reputation for being a manager, a progressive manager who play, plays great football, into trophies. You know, I was looking at, again. You know. Uh, um, Pep Guardiola, who has been at clubs who are expected to win trophies and who are built to win trophies, he's won 32 trophies. He's a year older than Poch. Even Unai Emery, I think, has won 11 trophies. He's the same age as Poch. And look at the way we kind of view those two managers. We, we view one as you know an up and coming young manager, and the other one as a bit of a failure because of what he did at Arsenal and, and Paris Saint Germain. So yeah, I think the uh, I think I think the pressure is on on Pochettino this year because if you can't win trophies with that team, then uh, you know that there, there is something uh, desperately wrong. I mean, I think the, the the only issue that he's got is just finding the right balance balance for the team because you know with with that front front three, you would expect them to win you know, every match they go into and, and win it comfortably. Yeah, Simon, you're forgetting one trophy from Pochettino, the media darling of the Southern Press Cup. Because um, <laughs> I have to say, I, yeah, Pochettino I divides opinion, did not he? I saw you flinch then, Crossy, when I mentioned his trophy hall. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, I hate it. I love the guy. I've got to say, I love the guy. You know, he's charm personified. He's He's fantastic. You know, he's got really something about him. I just think, uh, uh, you know, he, yeah, he, even the biggest Pochettino fan and sort of defender would say he's just got to do it, you know, just got to do it this season, isn't he? There's just no excuse. Well, 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 I mean, I, I, by, by the way, by the way, do you remember early in the season, early in the summer rather, he flirted incredibly hard with Tottenham. Yeah. Now, just imagine if he'd gone now, you know, to Tottenham, he, you know, overseeing the Harry Kane saga and sort of kind of, you know, lowered expectations for Tottenham and what, you know, what they're hoping for this season, trying to get into the top six, or the missed opportunity of managing Messi. I'm a big admirer of Pochettino, and it's to the point where I thought Man United missed the trick in not appointing him mm. um, when they had the chance. Where you know, after he'd, he'd left Tottenham, and he was kind of in limbo for for virtually a year. 
And I just thought, you know, that he, I, I thought he would be a, a really good fit for, for for Man United because he would be at the, you know, he, he would get the backing as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done the backing in the transfer market. Obviously, he's gone to a club where, you know, money really is no object. And like I say, that there there are no excuses for him now. You know, he's he's got to start winning the winning the big trophies. And at Paris Saint Germain, the big trophies are you know is the Champions League. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Uh, 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 last night, Chris, with you know the, the Super Cup final, you know you had this sort of conquest of um, of uh, you know PSG with, with Man City, and then the conquest of 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 Man City with Chelsea. Um, you know, only to meet that that bizarre Villarreal team. Who I can never quite understand how they do it, but they always do it. And you know, they, they were a penalty kick really away from from more glory in Europe. And yeah, no no one quite understands sort of kind of the Unai Emery philosophy or quite how he does it. The only place he's not managed to do it was Arsenal. Really. <laughs> so, but um, but it, 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 I, the one thing I couldn't understand. It, you know, was, was watching it, it suddenly goes, I mean, you know, it's, it wasn't a surprise because I knew it was coming, but you kind of forget during the game because you think of it as a sort of a, a bit of a glorified pre-season friendly that it suddenly goes into extra time. But bearing yeah. in mind, we've got three days before the start of the Premier League season. I mean, it did seem absolute madness, didn't it, last night? And Chelsea, I think, have paid a price with Zayek, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it was the same when Liverpool played played Chelsea in it. It's like, it's a good trophy to win and all of that, but I don't think anybody does. Anybody look back when they're counting up their real honours and go, "We've won the UEFA four, UEFA five, six, UEFA Super Cups." I don't think great managers or great players will look back on it. So, what's the point of extra time for for it? I mean, somebody told me a stat that like Pau Torres has been involved in like some serious like five or six extra time games now, nearly in a row between. Spain uh, in the Olympics and in the Euros and in the Europa League final. So I think he might be feeling a bit tired going into the new season. But yeah, Chelsea, the last thing you need three days before the season is another 30 minutes. But look, they won the trophy. They obviously wanted to win it. They, that Tuchel took that gamble of bringing on Kepa, that it was obviously a, a planned kind of tactic. So they certainly thought about it. It, it certainly wasn't treated like them, like a preseason friendly. I don't think if he's. If he's in his plans, he's thinking, I'm going to sub the keeper off here if it gets the penalties. He's not just thought about that in extra time, has he? He's, he's planned that in the week. So maybe, maybe I think as well, it might be one of those trophies that I seem, it seem bigger on the continent than it is in England. I think mm. it, that is a case for it. But yeah, extra time in it. No, not for me. Straight to penalties. It's more fun, especially for the neutrals. Yeah, it is. It really it so winds me up in commentary when people sort of, you know, commentators or the pe people in the studio often go, oh, we want this settled in a, pro in a proper way. No, 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 we don't. We want it settled by penalties. You know? it's Especially like, if you're know. on a newspaper deadline, just get on with exactly. it. Exactly, yeah, well, you know, yeah. if you're not working, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, 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 I just thought the Kepa story was fabulous as well, wasn't it? I mean, the symmetry of that, bearing in mind what happened with the Carabao Cup, you know, and sort of not refusing to go off. What, what you know, what a lesson there is there sort of in terms of um, being humble, in terms of being a good teammate from, from Mendy, blimey. Not only did he sort of stand aside, but the first man to sort of jump on Kepper afterwards, James, was was Mendy. It was brilliant, that, you know, that camaraderie for Chelsea, wasn't it? Yeah, do we now look back a bit differently on, on Kepper's um, tantrum at Wembley when he had to come off, you know, when he could have perhaps replicated the, the spot kick her heroics uh, back then, maybe, you know? I mean, yeah, probably. Pretty unforgivable at the time, but he's clearly a very confident and capable keeper when it comes to spot kicks. So I now get a bit better idea why we're so determined to stay on the pitch that day. Yeah, I, I do agree. It's an interesting point, really. Kepper is, is a decent keeper. What do, what do you make, James, of, of, of where Chelsea are? Because I, I listen, you know, we were asked to do our pre season predictions for, for this forthcoming season. I, I, you know, being, being the good boy that I, I am, I've, I've got them in early, but and um, and I did. I must must say I was torn between City and Chelsea for the title. I did go City, but I do think that you know if there's one team that could, and I've been taught you know toying with the idea of changing it since, but I do I do feel if there's one team that's going to challenge them, you know, I know United have done a lot of business, some decent business, but I think it'll be Chelsea. You know, where do you think Chelsea are? Do you, do they impress you, James? 
Well, like you, Crossy, I've also submitted my pre-season predictions, and I'm always very grateful that the paper don't print them at the end of the season, and they just print them at the start of the season. I don't know about you, lads. But, um, yeah, I went for City, and um, I've got Chelsea uh, runners-up, I think, as, as well in that. Look, we were, I don't know about you, but I was pretty disappointed when Lampard got the sack, but you just can't deny that Tuchel's taken them several levels higher, um, obviously culminating in that fantastic Champions League win. And they've got momentum again now, haven't they, after winning the Super Cup? Mm -hmm. um, he's an impressive guy, what he's done with the defence there. Um, and at the same time, added that cutting edge. And it sounds as though they're going to get the Kaku, doesn't it? Who's guaranteed goals, even if he did have some critics in Manchester. So clearly, uh, they will be uh, in the top four as a bit of a banker, I think. Um, whether they can match City for the title, in my opinion, it probably depends if City land Kane. I was at the champ. Um, Community Shield final at Wembley on Saturday, and City's um, shortcomings without a, a key striker up front in the absence of Aguero were, were plain to see. They had um, Torres down the middle, and he didn't look comfortable. And it's clearly they want and need Kane. I think if they're going to romp away with the title, if they don't get him. Maybe Chelsea will have a shot. Is it? Mm, yeah, it's interesting, Simon. The last few weeks, people have been saying, "Oh, blimey, might as well pack up and go home if if City get Kane and Grealish." But I do, I do think that that Chelsea are, you know, Tuchel has made such a difference. He shows what a top quality coach can do, doesn't he? I mean, we've had that across sort of really big Premier League teams. You know, what a fantastic impact Klopp has made and, um, you know, Guardiola. I mean, wow, he's changed the face of English football for me. I mean, it's just, I, I, I don't know. D d Am I am I reading that wrong, or do you think that even if City were to get that striker that they really want to give them that new focal point, that it's never that easy? Is it? It's never that straightforward, and and Chelsea will be in the mix. I think I think the, the Premier League is going to be a lot more competitive this year than it has been for, for a number of years. Yeah, because I think you know United have done really good business. They, you know, we talked about excuses with Pochettino. There are no excuses for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this year. He's got his number one target. He's got a top defender in Rafael Varane. Um, you know, United have got a really great squad. And if they can keep Pogba at the club, or if they do keep Pogba at the club, regardless of his contract situation, then, you know, they should be, forget um, finishing 10 points behind City and finishing second. They should be, you know, gearing towards a real title challenge. Chelsea, the same. I think uh, you're absolutely right. The job Tuchel has done. James is spot on. We were all uh, disappointed to see Frank Lampard, um, you know, lose, lose his job there. But the job that Tuchel did in the final few months of the season was exceptional. You know, I mean, more than exceptional. Winning, you know, winning the Champions League and qualifying for the for the uh, qualifying in the top four. Um, I think it's going to be quite interesting this year because for a few years we had that that kind of shootout between um, Guardiola and Klopp. And I think it's it's a three, if not a four way shootout now, because I think uh, I think Liverpool will come back strongly after what happened last season. And Pep, you, you can be sure that over the summer, losing three times to Tuchel in the space of what six weeks will have tortured him. It will have absolutely mm. tortured him, and he will have he he will be think he will he will look at Chelsea now as you know one of the the, the kind of real challenges challenges for the crown. Uh, but going back to predictions, I mean. Do what do what I always do and, and be uh, Gavin Williamson and just pretend that you forgot who you who you. Um, <laughs> you know, it's quite a long season of football season. So you can easily get out of it and say, "Oh, I, you know, I can't remember." Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, li listen, I think City will win it because I still think they've got the best um, squad, uh, and I think I think they have got the best manager uh, who and he's got more options. So I think City will win it, but I think it'll be tight. Um, but yeah, going back to predictions, I predicted last this time last year. I was predicting Villa to go down. How 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 foolish was that in the end? You know, oh, I tell you what, eight weeks into the season, wow, exactly. And look where they are, <laughs> look where they are now. You know, you, you would think Villa after you know the, the signings they brought in, yeah, the challenging for to, for top top eight, if not top six. Yeah, no, absolutely, it's a good point. I have to tell you, I did look at that Gavin Williams story. And I was thinking, I cannot for the life of I'm so old that I did O levels that basically 
I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me, I can't remember what I got in the O-level. In fairness to Gavin Williamson, it's not often I can say that because he's been one of my absolute ugh, worst ones, but I can't remember what I did at O-level. But there you go. Anyway, I can remember at A-level. But anyway, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to finally put you on the spot though, Simon. Do City get Kane? Uh, well, I said I said it on last week's show. I think they will get him. I think eventually, yeah. The, the, yeah, I think the pressure will tell and I think they will get him. And I think the, the key is getting this weekend's uh, game against Tottenham out of the way. Uh, I, I think it was pretty difficult for for any kind of agreement or business to be done before that game. But I, I think before the transfer window, I think they will get him, and I think that will be would be if they do get him the signing that pushes them over the line. Because Chelsea, if they get Lukaku, that they, they will solve that problem they had last year with goals. You know, Lukaku everywhere Lukaku has been, and he, even when he was at United and he had his critics at Old Trafford. He scored goals. He did score goals. If you gave him the service, he scored goals. And um, I think with the the creativity that Chelsea have got in the team, if they can get a, a, a proven season centre forward like Lukaku, I think that will will solve a lot of the issues that, that they had last season. Because for all his his industry and his effort, uh, Timo Werner doesn't score enough goals for a team that is um, you know that has, has got ambitions of the title. Mm, yeah, Chris. Looking at the best of the rest, if you like, where do you know if Spurs lose Kane? I, I mean, that's a devastating blow, isn't it? But you know, are they still the same team even with even if they keep him? You know, because basically, let's be honest, he wants to go to City, and that's clear, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, where, where does that leave? Where does that leave Spurs now? And um, you know, maybe bringing Arsenal in into that really sort of kind of you know, is there is there any hope in North London for a top six finish? I think it's going to be a sure. The problem with Spurs is if if this cane does go down to the wire and it and it's pushed right till the end, like are they going to be able to reinvest? I know they've bought in some players, and as the talks will imagine progress, as Simon says, after this weekend maybe they'll start to progress. They'll get an idea of what's going to happen, and they might start to to spend a bit before they get the money in. But they leave it too too late, and they don't. They don't spend it right or they have to go out and do a mad dash and everybody knows they, they're suddenly flush with cash. It's going to be very, very difficult for them. Um, yeah, I think the squad's weaker, but the, the Nuno factors, the, the kind of interesting thing for me because he did a great job initially at Wolves. Um, he got them up, he got them into the Europa League. It's not the most exciting of football, but it's effective. He gets results. It'd be interesting to see if he could maybe bring a bit more life out of somebody like Deli Ali. Um, he seemed to go totally off the boil on the Mourinho. There's been stories and whatnot about him, and you're wondering is 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 it a player? Is it or could there be a Luke Shaw case there where if he gets a manager who puts his arm around his shoulder that he can re- rediscover himself? And they'll need stuff like that to happen. But I think they're they're struggling, and I mean I'll I'll, I'll let you <laughs> answer more on Arsenal, but. Again, I haven't been inspired by the kind of summer transfer business. Ben White seems a good signing, a lot of money, but obviously he's young and English, so there's big sell-on value there, so that's well protected. Um, I've seen heavy links with, with Aaron Ramsdale, which kind of perplexed me. I, I haven't mm-hmm. seen anything from him to see he's worth that money as a goalkeeper, and surely that money would be better invested in, in other areas of the pitch. But, yeah, it's it's strange that North London used to be such a top four guaranteed for at least one of them. And now it's top six is a, is a big debate. So, but it's not looking good. I think Tottenham have to make a decision on Kane next week and just one way or the other, just accept that he's going or really batten down the hatches and keep him. But I can't see that happening. Once he said he wants to go, he's going to go, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, you would you would think so. No, I do, I do think it's a difficult one for Arsenal. I think Ben White's a good signing, but I don't... Um... You know, it's big, big one for Arteta really because he's. Got, I think he's got to get back in 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 the back six, back in in the reckoning, to kind of you know convince them that he's the man long term. I'm not sure. He'd, not sure he'd be able to do that unless they buy some midfield creativity. It'll be interesting, James, because you you know your take on it. I think Arsenal being, you know, have looked at at, at James Madison. I I personally think they probably realise they're not realistically going to get him. So I don't know how strong that pursuit has been. You know, in in recent times, really, because I think there's one thing liking a plan. I think there's another thing being realistic. Can you actually get him? But I don't know whether, you know, I don't, I don't for a moment think that that 
Leicester would sell easily, would they? But also it brings into the mix, doesn't it? You know, in in all this, we're talking about the traditional sort of kind of mix for the for the top four, and we don't bring Leicester into that conversation. Just how good Leicester, you know, do you think how good Leicester can be this season? Really, are are they going to? You know, they've got a few injuries again from pre season on top of the ones that they already have. So you know, where 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 do you see them going this season? Yeah. Hi, John. Um, well, touching on Madison, because that is all mm. part of Leicester's um, prospect, should we say, for this season. He was very good at Wembley uh, on Saturday in a front sort of three of, of, of Barnes, Vardy and Madison behind. But I mean, that that's pretty potent um, strike force. And, and, and I know Arsenal were interested in Madison, definitely. I think they were <clears> they go all out for him. My understanding was if Emil Smith Rowe left, that didn't happen. They still like Madison, and he, I believe, is open to a move to Arsenal. But as you rightly said, John, have Arsenal got the finances, the financial clout to go out and pay 70 million cash for him? Uh, I suspect not. And if you look at Leicester's track record, they do sell um, uh, a key player fairly regularly, really. Uh, Chilwell, Maguire, Mares, But it takes a transfer record generally to get the player out of the club. And I, I just don't see Arsenal paying that sort of money. So I would I would expect Madison to stay at Leicester uh, and be part of a team that... that Reporting is, in progress. You know, they've come fifth, haven't they? Successive seasons. Will they be able to improve on that again this season? I suspect not, you know, given what we've said uh, earlier about the strength of the top four. But can they win some more silverware? Why not? I mean, Rodgers has got a fantastic record of winning trophies now. <laughs> He's added the, the FA Cup and the Community Shield at Leicester to his incredible haul from Celtic. So why can't Leicester do something in the Europa League? Uh, why why can't they do something in the League Cup, which they've won before? Um, I know Rogers feels he's made their squad stronger this summer. Um, brought in another left back, uh, Ryan Bertrand. Uh, he had options there with Castagna and, and James Justin, but they had injury problems. He's added some more depth in holding midfield with Bubakari Suma. And, um, you know, we've got a potential successor to Jamie Vardy up front in Patson Dacca, who's got a lot of pace. He came off the bench at Wembley and looked really sharp. So I think their squad, assuming we don't see any exits, is stronger than last season, but it's going to be very hard to break that top four. Um, so, um, but another exciting season ahead for us, I feel. Yeah, no, sure. Simon, so, mean, is there anyone that you see? I mentioned, you mentioned Villa, so maybe aside from Villa, is there anyone that you see as emerging as a surprise package? potentially do you think um i think leicester will be um james was, was talking about finishing in, in the top five or six again i think leicester will will do that i think they've got um they've not only got a strong squad leicester um but they've got a really um ambitious um progressive manager in brendan rogers um uh, apart from Leicester, Leicester and Villa, not not really. You know, you you would hope that that Spurs and that and Arsenal will will, will progress. Um, obviously, uh, Arteta has been there a year now. Um, new manager at Tottenham in Nuno, uh, but apart from that, no, I, I can't see anybody really challenging for 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 that that top six. Apart from those clubs we've mentioned. Sorry, I, I I lost you there very briefly at, at the end there. But let's let's um let's. I, I was just also going to ask about sort of who who the new how the new boys people think that how the new boys will fare, um, moving moving forward. Um, be be interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, Brentford. I think I think Brentford. It's sort of their manager is really go go forward and sort of Thomas Frank. It'll be it'll be interesting. Norwich, you know, Norwich back again, and. Uh, well, you know where do we where do we think the new boys might might do? James, James, I know you've got a, a sort of a, always a keen eye on Norwich. How do, do, will they be a better prospect? Do you think this, this you know this season than when when they were in last time? I think so, Crossy. Um, but I'll be honest, if Norwich finish uh, out of the drop zone, I think they'll do, do, be doing well. I mean, they, they look like they've got a better squad, but again, they've. they've have sold us a key player. Emmy Buendia has gone to Villa, which I know is absolutely nightmare. He was the man who supplied the ammunition to Pukki. Brilliant passes to open up defences, and Ollie Watkins is going to love them at Villa this season. So he was a real talisman for the team. And to see that guy go out the team when they go back into the Premier League, I don't think it bodes very well for Norwich. I mean, I, I won't be surprised to see all three of those promoted teams struggling big time. Personally, 
but but I can also see tough seasons ahead for the likes of Palace, Newcastle, maybe Brighton too. So, you know, there's a chance one, maybe two of them might survive. But um, I'm not hugely confident as a Canaries fan, although I will just say they, they, they have shown a lot more ambition in the transfer market spending money this summer, but they've brought in a lot of players from overseas who, quite frankly, um, have an unknown quantity about them. So, you know, we'll really have to see. Uh, yeah, Chris, who, who might be the strugglers this season, do you think? Is, um, it always, is, is he going to come down to the newly promoted boys? I think I've got to look at Burnley this year. Um, mm. I've said it obviously, a few times, you always think, but this summer, really, like, they've done no, re- next to nothing business-wise. I think the fans had hoped that the new owners might put something into the playing squad and, and there's certainly been nothing to kind of get anybody there excited about. Um, and you just wondered at the kind of whole us against the world thing will go a bit stale and, and that kind of, I suppose, attitude will, yeah, will wear thin. But, I mean, they'll have the fans back, which is a big thing, the atmosphere at have more. But I, I think they're going to be one that, I just I don't see how they can stay up unless they do something magical in the last two weeks, which looks very, very, very unlikely in this transfer window. So they'd be one, and I think it's then the next two for me are between the three who've come up. So Brentford are exciting, and it's going to be great to see what they can do in the Premier League, but sometimes it doesn't work out. We've, we've seen with Norwich in the past, they came up playing some fantastic football, and everybody says how great they are, and all of these top managers, Klopp and Guardiola, hail them for the for the style of football, but it usually comes after they've smashed them 4-0. And it's just like, yeah, that's great. They've, they've come out and played, gone toe-to-toe with you and got, got uh, heavily beaten. That's not how you do it. So, interesting if maybe Norwich have a bit more steel about them because they've gone through that. But um, I think I think it'd be between... Uh, if it, one of the three to stay up, I'd probably back Brentford. Mm, yeah, I, I, I've got to say, I do think, I think people are going to like Brentford, just because yeah. I think they're going to be quite attractive to watch. The manager's a character, you know. It's quite a tight little stadium, which I think is going to whip up an atmosphere. And I think, it, yeah, I just think they're a bit different, you know. So it'd be, I think it'd be really interesting, actually. So uh, Premier League fans are, in, you know, Ivan Tony. We saw it, mm-hmm. you know. I, I've only seen him on TV. I've not seen him live. But he he looks uh, he, he looks like the kind of player that 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 you know I, th- I think he could do well in the in the Premier League. Keeps he, he just keeps defenders on the toes all the time. He's really um, you know he's really busy. He's, he, he he makes some great runs, and I'm just looking forward to seeing Brentford because he had a couple of near misses with the Premier League. Mm. It's great to see them finally get that reward, um, and it'll be great. And like I say, players like Ivan Tony, it'll be great to see how they. Uh, how they cope with the Premier League. I've got to say, I looked at the uh, the, the fixtures this this morning, and Norwich have been given the hand from hell. I mean, you know, we start off with Liverpool, then City, then Leicester, then Arsenal. So you know that that is the last thing you want is that kind of run in the in in the first month of the season. Uh, Chris is absolutely right. By the way, I would keep an eye on. I would keep a close eye on what's happening at Burnley because mm. not only have the new owners kind of really failed to invest in the squad. But um, Sean Dyche has yet to sign a contract. He's in the final year of his contract. Now, we spoke to Sean last week about it, and he was adamant that it's just a case of, it's with the lawyers and it's just a, a case of uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. But, you know, this this has been a saga that's probably been going on for the last 10, 12 months, and it's still not been done. And you've got to wonder why it hasn't been done, because it doesn't take, even, even with the best will in the world, it doesn't take lawyers that long to get an agreement in place so i just wonder whether there is a there is a sticking point there um mm. because like to say they, they, i don't know they, they just seems a little bit of a different atmosphere at, at burnley this summer than, than it normally is yeah yeah i must say in my, in my pre-season predictions i was like i was i was with chris i actually put burnley to go down just because of that lack of activity you know dice is a miracle worker not yeah. not just you know not taking away anything from him the job he does is just amazing but I just, I just think, you know, there's only so much you can do, and I think one of the things is that he basically does, he does freshen it up with the odd, you know, intelligent signing. You know, maybe it's a sort of, you know, a Dwight McNeil who hasn't quite found his way somewhere else, or, 
you know, or someone to freshen it up. We've not had, you know, anything really that makes you suddenly go, oh, you know, they've suddenly got a bit of new impetus. And I just, I do, I do worry for them. Maybe they'll do something, you know, maybe he'll sign the contract in the next week or so. But like you, Simon, I, you know, he really, you know, it's, we all associate Sean Dyche with Burnley, don't we? So if he's going to sign it, he's going to sign it. So I just feel like you, I think, you know, you begin to wonder, don't you, whether something else is... Yeah. Is at play. I to totally agree with you. Um, really, I, I was just going to say, you know, obviously there's been some big deals, and Grealish, you know, is one that's sort of caught the eye. Is there anyone that's sort of slightly under the under under the radar that any of you guys think is is a good, you know, is it is a decent one? Um, just before we come on to our and finally, sort of the best free transfer signing ever. But it's just, um, but you know, is there anyone that kind of makes you think, oh, that's a good one. That's a shrewd bit of business. Strong curveball there, Cross. He could have given yeah. us a very early warning. Sorry. That was coming. <laughs> I think it's on the half early morning. <laughs> uh, a, little, a little bit of intel I heard out of Villa is that Ashley Young's obviously gone back at age 36, I think he is now, and he's on a free transfer. But the feedback I've heard from, about his fitness and training and his attitude is absolutely fantastic. And um, you know, he's uh, Matty Target at left back was a shoe in every, every I think he played every game last season, but he's under massive pressure from Young already. It, it, it's an interesting signing, but obviously it plays at the heartstrings a bit and comes back on a free. But apparently he's got a lot left in the tank, he's got a lot of experience to add to a young team. And I think that's a good that's a good signing for Villa. And um, you know, with allied to the arrivals of like Bailey Ings and Buendia. You can mm. make the case that Villa are actually stronger squad now than they were when Jack Grealish was there. Um, even though Grealish clearly was absolutely outstanding and we're all looking forward to seeing him probably tear it up at City. Yeah, no, it'd be interesting. That. Come I'm, on then, guys. I'm quite on. looking forward to seeing Christian Romero at, um, at Tottenham. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's arrived with quite a big reputation. He, he must be a decent defender to be voted the best defender in, in Serie A. Um, mm. And I'm just looking forward to see how he fits in because... Uh, you know, there's an option to buy at the end of the at the end of the loan deal. Um, he won the Copper America in the summer, um, although he was, I think he was more of a squad player with Argentina. But I think that's one that I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing um, uh, because, like I say, he comes with, he comes with uh, a big reputation from from Italy. Yeah, sure, Chris. I'll let you off the hook, and we'll go straight into the uh, into the <laughs> the best free transfer signing that you can remember. Is it? There's if there's a few uh, I had a look at, but. I from a financial point of view, for me, I mean, Pogba going from Juventus to United just for what they recouped on him. But from goals, success and what he's won, I can't see much better, certainly in recent times, than uh, Lewandowski going from Dortmund to Bayern Munich on a free transfer. I mean, wow. uh, he obviously it was a cheeky one mm. where he ran down his contract because he refused to sell him 12 months earlier. But um, to get him for... For nothing, well, apart from probably a huge signing on fee and massive wages, but he certainly delivered goals, become one of the best goal scorers in Europe in that time, and and won a Champions League and a few Bundesligas to go with it. So that'd have to be the one for me. Mm, yeah, sure, Simon. Well, being a Manchester boy, I've got to I've got to take you 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 chaps back to 1973, all the way back. I know. <laughs> I know you probably weren't born then. <laughs> Manchester United legend returns to Manchester City and in, in the last game of the season, back heels a winning goal at Old Trafford <laughs> and that Manchester United were relegated. Does it get better than that? No, not no. really. As stories no. go, they don't. They really don't. It's just astonishing. Absolutely amazing. So, go on, go on James. Well, I can't top that story-wise, but I, I was I saw a lot of James Milner when he was at Villa, mm. and I love players who get every ounce out of their career. And Milner has been a fantastic professional. Uh, I've never touched a drop of alcohol that I'm aware of. Um, you know, great with young players, and I was really impressed with and, and hugely impressed with the impact he had at Liverpool on and off the pitch to help make them serial winners under clock. And I think he played a major role in that. So that was a cracking free transfer for them from Man City. But as you did just say earlier, I am a Norwich fan. And my friends told me to mention TV Poopy going to Norwich on a free transfer. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Although I've got to say, guys, I do think Sol Campbell, basically. Come on. 
2001, <laughs> the Tottenham captain going to their biggest, you know, rivals and then winning the lot with Arsenal. I wondered, Crossy, why you were <laughs> yeah, crossing in. Well, yeah. I just thought, I'll just thought I'd, I'd help out the conversation if no one offers him up. <laughs> and then it transforms himself from, from Spurs captain into an absolute Arsenal legend. <laughs> so, no, that was just, yeah, it's an astonishing move. But no, it's all about the stories, really, isn't it? You know, I mean, you know, Messi, you know, it's still with huge high finance. But it's about the stories, about the Dennis Law, about the Sol Campbell, isn't it? You know, sort of thing, really, that, that makes football and sort of kind of, anyway. But there you go. Guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you joining us. And um, been, it's so really nice to see you, you, your faces again before the start on the eve of the season, really, before the start of the season. So I hope you, hope you enjoy it. And, um, and, and, yeah, have a good weekend. Nice to be back. So thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here same time, same place next week. <laughs>